Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning. It's very echoey in here. Why is it so echoey? We need some like blinds or curtains. I've got Minnie Mouse hair. I'm feeling very tired. I've been on a hen do weekend this weekend and I haven't drank that much in, I wouldn't even be able to tell you. I feel like maybe since my hen do, but even then I don't think I drank that much. It was so exciting and so fun to see some people who I haven't seen in a really long time. And it was a lovely, lovely, fun, exciting weekend. It was just, it was absolutely hilarious. I haven't laughed that much in so long. We just had the giggles all weekend and it was a proper girls trip. So yeah, had a wonderful, a wonderful time, but I am feeling a little bit tired because I can't do it like I used to do it. I just am not, I'm not, <laughs> I just can't. I'm sure you all feel the same when you go out and drink. Um, I'm just not cut out for it anymore. And it actually did make me realize I really am not cut out for it anymore and I'm not gonna be drinking until probably the wedding. <laughs> my friend's wedding, which I'm so excited for now after seeing everyone. But we're back home, I need to unpack and I need to do a bit of a wardrobe switch around. I decided to do this after going away because I thought that would be a perfect way because whenever I get home, I'm a bit like, oh, I feel a bit sluggish, like I can't get back into a routine. And I thought a great thing to do when I get back would be to unpack and then get all my spring and summer clothes out and sort of sort my wardrobe out a bit. I don't know how much decluttering there will be involved because I did do a declutter with you not that long ago, but you never know. Like I feel like I, I love decluttering because I feel like it just gives me this new lease of life. It gives me this new fresh start and I'm always changing my mind. I'm always, you know, ebbing and flowing. I talk a lot about how my weight will change, my weight will fluctuate, which impacts the clothes you own and how much you declutter, you know, year in year your style changes and there's always reasons why things maybe don't make sense to you anymore that they did or you know it's, it's always good to make make you think about these things and go through things and I might go through it all and think you know what my wardrobe's looking great or I might go through and think I don't wear these clothes at all so we'll see I love doing the whole putting the spring and summer clothes away and putting the winter clothes away personally because it makes me not be as tempted to shop so if you are someone who is a bit of a shopping addict like I am, or used to be, then I really recommend doing this because it's, it means that every season, instead of going online and looking and thinking, oh, what summer clothes or spring clothes can I buy? I get my wardrobe stuff out. And I have felt that temptation over the last couple of weeks of thinking, oh, I'm gonna go on holiday potentially this summer. So maybe I have a look at some spring summer clothes that I could, I could get. And I think getting stuff out of the, out of my spring summer wardrobe that I've put away will make me realize I actually have all those things already and I don't need to go shopping. So that's a really great tip I would recommend if you are someone who is tempted <laughs> to shop, shop your own wardrobe. And yeah, it's ironic because I just looked on the news this morning that this evening is going to be the coldest night of the year and I'm just about to do my spring summer wardrobe switch around. Doesn't really make any sense. This weekend was freezing, today it's freezing, it's like, three degrees, like, I wanna be wearing spring summer clothes. <laughs> make it make sense. Anyway, I'm gonna do my skincare. I had a bath last night, so I'm feeling fresh, but I'm gonna do my skincare, clean my teeth, and get in the dressing room to unpack and get everything out and decide what I'm keeping. I've been using some amazing skincare recently um, that I've been loving, and some of you have been asking about what I've been doing with my skin recently. So let me know if you want me to talk a little bit more in detail about my skincare routine, my sort of like more natural, but also cruelty-free vegan, but also I do like a good old scientific, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm not a sort of clean beauty fanatic. I'm more of a combination of the sort of the natural and the scientific skincare. If that makes any sense to anyone. <laughs> but let me know, because I would happily share, because I feel like I've, I've found my feet with it and my skin is feeling great. My impulsive self was very tempted to just get stuck into the wardrobe straight away, but it's really helpful to start with a clean space. So if you are decluttering, don't make the mistake of getting really excited. Maybe 
you're trying to move your room around, you're trying to sort of really sort something out. I used to do this where I just start when the room was messy and you just make it messier and it becomes overwhelming. So start with a tidy space. I cannot wait until with this bath is no longer in this room because the amount of videos that I film in here and I have a bath <laughs> in my dressing room. Hopefully this spring, summer, we're gonna get the bathroom done. But I'm gonna unpack, put all these clothes away. The folding has been done. The laundry needs to be put away. And then we can start fresh with a tidy space. This is my vacuum pack of summer clothes. It's not vacuum packed anymore <laughs> because uh, my friend that I mentioned that I went on the Hindu for asked to borrow some white clothes. I'm gonna go through this first before I get into the wardrobes because I feel like that will motivate me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna empty it. I'm actually like looking at this like, oh my gosh. All of these lovely dresses. I do have a bit of a dress obsession. So be warned. <laughs> and a lot of these I did buy last summer. A lot of them are very old actually. Ooh. Oh, I thought it was a spider. So I'm just gonna go through and have a little think. I have had this for years and I love this because every, and I recommend getting something like this. I think I got this on Depop and it's originally from Topshop and I've had this maybe since I was like 22. And I wear it every summer as my walking around the house, pajamas, um, it's boiling hot on holiday kind of play suit because it's super stretchy and comfortable. Um, I'm just thinking, all of this is gonna to have to go in the wash, isn't it? Cause it's gonna smell. Does it smell? No, those don't. Maybe it's just this needs to go in the wash. So I'll probably wash some of it um, if I decide to keep it. This 100% I'm keeping, but this will go in like my pajama drawer, but that's gonna go in the wash cause it smells a little bit like it needs to go in the wash. I have an issue that I would like advice on. So last year when I went on my honeymoon, took a lot of white clothes with me and sun cream got on everything and it's left these like yellow marks. Cause I wear a lot of natural kind of linen materials and I did notice on a lot of my white and pale clothes that there were these yellowy marks. Like there's even just all over the legs, I guess, from where I've put sun cream on and then put the clothes on. How do I get that out? Because these have been washed. I love these trousers. These are from Faithful the brand, which is probably one of my favorite brands to shop uh, summer sustainable clothing from. They do lovely, I actually don't own any swimsuits from them, but they do lots of like swimsuits, dresses, stuff like this. And I absolutely love these. They are so practical and I wore them so much on our honeymoon. They, I'm gonna put these in the wash, but I'm gonna take your advice. I must, I think what I'll do to begin with is I'll put some sort of stain remover on the bits where there's stains and hope that gets somewhere. We'll see. But I'll put all this in the wash because it does smell a little bit vacuum packed. This dress is another faithful the brand, I think I got loads of stuff on flannels last year on sale. This was like 50 pounds reduced from like 200 and something. I love this dress. I mean, look at it, 100% keeping that, but it's gonna go. Yeah, all of this is gonna go in the wash, but another faithful, the brand. Can you tell I like gingham? And I like floaty dresses. I have this in white as well. Oh, that's hung up in the wardrobe because that was one that she returned to me. Love this, this is good. I literally wore this so many times last year all of my swimsuits. I love this dress, this is definitely staying. This is a vintage dress. And I think this year for summer clothes, I really want to mainly shop vintage, secondhand um, charity shop stuff because I've been doing that, um, I mean, I've been doing that since I was a teenager, since I was about 12, but I did that a little bit more this year and I've got some really nice things. And I think maybe from the pandemic, I stopped going as much. So I like found my love for it a little bit again. I think from also becoming a bit more okay with my body and body confident, I'm nearly there. Um, I started to go and charity shop a little bit more and get more excited about that. So that's good. This is 
one of my favorite dresses and I got it in a vintage shop in Penzance. So I might even go back to that specific shop because it had some great things. I've got this na Naked Generation dress in three colors. So you've seen me wear it loads, but I put this cream one away for the winter. I've got it in green and also a sort of ochre red. And it's my favorite dress from theirs because they're so floaty and comfortable. This one I did rip, but my mum repaired it because I put it in the wash and you're supposed to hand wash them. I still put them in the wash because I cannot be bothered to hand wash any of my clothes, but they're beautiful. So if they still sell them, I look, I'll link them below. They're a Cornish brand. I think they actually sell them on Anthropology now, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is definitely going back in, but in the wash first. This I'm unsure. I really like this. You're probably gonna tell me to keep it because it's a cool color, but um, this linen is a little itchy, but it's such a nice color, isn't it? This color does suit me. I'm unsure about these. I think I need to try these on because they look quite big but they do have a drawstring, so maybe that's fine. I've got two of the same, essentially the same pair of shorts. Oh my gosh, receipts in the pocket, where are these from? Oh look, this makes me sentimental. This receipt's from our honeymoon, I'm gonna keep that. This is the last night of our honeymoon, I think, where we sat on the front and we had some like olives and snacks and some cocktails, it just as a aperitif, but I think we had some like olives maybe. Oh my gosh, that's so cute though, I'm gonna keep those. So yeah, what was I saying? I've got two pairs of like the same pair of shorts, but it's not like they're not used. So this is from M&S. These are a bit more baggy and they've got the kind of ruffle top. And then this is from Stay Wild Swim. Um, and I've got a matching shirt i do wear both of them but is that really silly to have no it's not because i literally took them both on my honeymoon and wore both of them but they both need to go in the wash these trousers i got in marrakesh and i think i took them on my honeymoon but i don't think i wore them maybe they're too small because i think they're a size 10. let me have a look they are pretty cool though i think i need to wash those and no i need to try those on this is another dress that has the sun cream marks on it do you see like it's yellow on the edge and I don't know how to get rid of that. I think it's because it's linen. It's like absorbing the sun cream. So I think that that's gonna go in the wash. I have this in this color and also in a floral print and they're from And Other Stories. I got them with my friend Cheryl when we went to Paris, when I went to visit her in Paris before we went to Provence. And it was the first time going into a changing room and trying on clothes. I'm actually feeling really confident and I don't know if it was because I was on holiday I don't know if it was because the clothing was more suited to my style, whatever it was. It was a lovely moment, so I had to buy them and um, that needs to go in the wash, so I'm definitely keeping those. These, I might get rid of these. Oh, it makes me really sad. I think they're just way too small for me. What I might do, I'm gonna give these to my sister. I'm gonna give these to my sister. She'll like those. They're from Everlane. I got them years ago, but they're a size 10 and they're like a small 10, so I just don't think I think then it, my sister will like those a lot. This is vintage, love gingham, love this color. I wore this to Glastonbury and I love this. It's just like little dungarees, looks great like this, like with a t-shirt, how cute. So these two are my question marks. Isn't that funny that they're both the same color? Hey Frankie. Hello. So this is an off the shoulder little number. Hi. And I haven't worn this in a while. I wore this to a wedding. And I wore it in Mallorca. What do you want? What? Hello. It's really comfy, that's why I keep it, because look how stretchy it is. <laughs> it's a perfect holiday dress, but I don't really wear it outside of holiday. I think... No, I think I'm going to keep it. I don't think I'm going to get rid of anything. Why is that? That's so boring, isn't it? Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I'm getting to the point in my decluttering where I don't get rid of things now. Can you vote down below whether I should keep or get rid of this? I know I'm not wearing it, but... I think keep. It's classic, isn't it? Oh, I'm actually getting rid of the trousers. Right, so I need to try these on. These are the shorts. They have a drawstring, so they're very big. <laughs> but they do have a drawstring, so maybe they're just like the sort of shorts that are quite useful because maybe that's why they've designed them this way, so that you can wear them, you know, no matter what size you are, but whether that's unflattering because they're a bit big. You know, like when things are too big on your waist and you cinch them in a lot, there's a lot of extra fabric, so it's not particularly... They're a bit boxy. Can you let me know about these? I feel like they're a little bit boxy, but I probably would not wear them like that, though. 
maybe I might wear them more like this. I usually wear these, I think, with a stripey, a stripey top. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm not sure. They're from Organic Basics. It's so difficult to show you in here. These definitely don't fit me. Do you see how this, oh, they're so funny. Because they're too tight on my thighs. They create that funny shape with the stripes. Yeah, these are too small, which is really sad because I really like them because um, they used to just be baggy, sort of stripey. They're just too fitted. I think these are going to be another give to my sister pair because um, I think she'll like these. So the conclusion is I'm getting rid of two pairs which don't fit me anymore, which is challenging always. I like to talk about this a lot because I know so many of you really get me when I talk about weight fluctuation, getting rid of clothes that don't fit you, the difficulties with that. It's a part of being a woman that's a struggle. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of, I don't know, when you reach this age, there's a lot of like, I saw something recently saying about how this woman was saying how she's sort of almost grieving and having to let go of her teenage body but it's extremely difficult because everything we see in the media is women who still have those bodies. So we see a lot of young women who still look very young and have very young uh, figures and that's the norm. And then lots of women who maybe are our age who maintain that figure because they are actresses, models, and that's kind of part of it. And there's a lot of pressure on them to, to look a certain way. And we do go through like, I think we go through a second puberty in our twenties and our bodies change a lot and that's normal and yet we're kind of brainwashed to believe that that's not normal i don't know it's almost like it's not a thing for some people and that's what we see a lot of so it can be difficult to let go of and um that's why i like to bring it up because i'm not immune to that i am the same <laughs> i do find it challenging so going through spring summer clothes when maybe you know last summer maybe you were a different size maybe you were bigger maybe you were smaller um it can be challenging you don't always have to declutter things i have had some people sort of say to me you know declutter stuff if it doesn't fit you anymore and i do sometimes but sometimes i've done that and regretted it because my weight fluctuates and then i i miss those clothes and i have to buy new clothes so now i tend to keep clothes in a range of three ish sizes that i tend to fluctuate between and only get rid of things if they've been there for quite some time like these two items i've had since maybe i think these trousers since 2018 and these trousers since 2019 and that's quite a long time and i don't think i've worn them for the last couple of years and i think that i did take these on my honeymoon and i didn't wear them because maybe they're i don't know why i have no idea maybe they didn't fit me maybe i just didn't like them so i think that that's the way i approach it i don't i try not to be too impulsive about it because yeah everyone fluctuates but I just wanted to bring that up I like to bring it up in most of my declutter videos because it is something that's on my mind and it's normal it's part of life it's part of growing up it's part of your wardrobe changing and my my best bet is I just keep things in my wardrobe that are like in that bracket of my my size range that I go between so that's how I tend to do it but I'm going to go into this cupboard probably first because this is a bit more fun this is my fun dresses wardrobe and I'm going to take things out bit by bit and decide if I need to declutter anything I'm hoping I'm hoping that I don't but you never know you never know so I would highly recommend if you're doing this for the first time I always say this or if this is a huge declutter for you for you to take everything out and start from scratch and go through everything with a fine tooth comb because I do this so regularly I'm not going to do that because it's just not I don't need to. I'm gonna take things out one by one and look at them because I know my wardrobe off by heart. I know what stuff is in here. I decluttered it with you, I swear, within the last six months. And so I don't need to take everything out. It's a task that would just be a waste of my time. But if you're doing this and you haven't done this in like a year or you're not used to doing this, take everything out from the section you're decluttering and do it bit by bit. Don't take the whole wardrobe out because <laughs> you might get overwhelmed but maybe start with your shoes, take all your shoes out or start with your trousers and take all of those out or a, whole, a drawer, take the whole drawer out. Because seeing it all out in the open makes you realize how much stuff is there. And you can see it all as a group. You can see the colors, you can see the shapes, the sizes, all of it, and compare. And really, it does point out the ones that you don't wear or that you don't like anymore, that don't really fit in your wardrobe. And it makes things a lot simpler. So highly recommend doing that. But I, just for the sake of the fact that I, I don't need to, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that today. 
but I am gonna take stuff out that is not gonna be worn in spring and summer. So this is a dress that I got for new, was it for New Year's? I think I got it for New Year's. It was in Lemon Key Market in Truro in the Illustrated Living. There's Illustrated Living, which is like a homeware shop. And then there's the sort of gifts and fashion version of it on the other side. And I saw it in the window and I thought, Do you know what? I've always wanted a dress like that. And it's, I love that, that shop. I love supporting sort of independent shops. And so if I like something, if I see something in a, in a small shop in town, in Cornwall, I, I, do, I do think, yeah, I should get that because it's supporting them. It's like the bra I'm wearing right now. I have bras like this, but I was walking by um, a shop in St. Ives and it was a small um, fashion shop. And then they did like sustainable underwear. And so I picked it up and it's like one of my most worn bras now. So yeah, I'm gonna put this away for the winter because I'm not gonna be wearing this in the summer. I highly doubt, I think glitters in my mind anyway, are for winter and Christmas. But you never know, there may be an occasion that I grab it, but I, I, don't, I don't think there will be. So this is probably gonna go away. And I love the shape of this. The reason I got it is because I just think this is gonna be timeless for years and years. And it's the sort of style and shape that will fit me no matter what size I am which is wonderful. I wore it for New Year's and a Christmas party actually. This dress I got a couple years ago now, two years ago, or was it last spring? This was from Needle and Thread and I got it for a wedding. And the reason I got it was because I thought I could wear it to multiple weddings in the future and it was on sale. How gorgeous is this dress? Like, wow. But I'm gonna keep it in there because I do have a wedding coming up in the summer. I might not wear it, I might wear it, but I'm gonna keep it in there because yeah, I'm so excited to wear things like this again. I left some of these things in here thinking I'd wear them in the winter and I didn't actually wear this in the winter because I thought I might wear it with a uh, jumper and tights, but I just didn't. So I think next summer I will put this away. This is from Sea Salt. This is new. I got this from Nobody's Child actually literally a week ago or so because I bought a skirt for the Hindu and I saw this on their website. I thought that is just so me. And something that's been going around on TikTok lately is the whole sort of colour theory thing. And I was thinking how I do have a lot of clothes that I think aren't my colours. Potentially this. A lot of the sort of beiges and neutrals, even the, the trousers I was showing you, I'm not convinced that these colours are actually that great for me. I think they wash me out. Whereas like maybe whites or creams are better than like beiges. But let me know if you have any ideas about sort of what colours would suit me but I think my my hunch is that it's some more of the I don't know the kind of the greens the blues the cooler tones but then it's hard because I've got hazel eyes it's like you'd think I'm like a a cool tone person because I've got high contrast I think that's the key as I think that I I can I can wear some warm colours because I've got hazel eyes my hair is brown and I'm I'm like neutral my undertone um, I'm not like pink or yellow, I'm like kind of in the middle. But I think that I can't wear too much of that because I have the high contrast, which I think changes things. But I think colours like this, I can see it on the camera, I do think colours like this really do look good on me. So I think that I'm trying to remember that a little bit more than like in my mind what I like the aesthetic of. I think I like these kind of beiges and stuff because they're neutral and they're very like, but I I don't know, let me know, but I think these colours potentially wash me out a little bit because I am pale. Let me know what you think my colour is because I know that, that you're like warm winter or spring, summer, all those kinds of things. If any of you are colour theory people, um, I feel like I would love to go to a consultation about it. I think that my colours that I do wear, I think I'm onto something. I think I'm, I'm nearly there, but I think there's maybe a few things I could change up. And I don't think it's like a strict hard and fast rule where you have to stick by. I think it's more that you, you don't want to wear too many of the colours that aren't in your colour wheel, too close to your face or too much of them. So like this sort of thing, maybe it isn't that great on me, but it, it could be something that I could wear with a navy jacket or something else with it so that it offsets it or you don't want to wear it too close to your face or you want to wear like jewelry that changes it up a bit stuff like that um but let me know if there's like is there like an online test you can take is there something that you can do in the uk is there how do you do it i would love to i would love to it's something i'd be very intrigued in but like it even i think it even comes down to the kinds of yellows like i'm now looking at this and thinking is this just not the yellow that suits me compared to like well, this is a similar yellow, you know, but this is maybe this better. Like, should I be going for, like, is this not the yellow for me? I don't know, maybe it is. It's hard, because I have hazel eyes, 
but then I'm high contrast and pale. Who knows? Let me know, you can tell me. You guys know lots more about these things than I do. I learn so much. This is so annoying because this happens to me every year. I always ponder this skirt. I pondered this skirt with Elastic Clutter. And I said to everyone, I was like, I don't really wear skirts, but I really like this skirt. Is this my kind of pink? Is it? I feel like this kind of pink is my kind of pink because I have a lot of this pink. <sighs> I'm going to give it another shot. It's too pretty to get rid of because like this outfit, like with some Birkenstocks or some trainers, I'm going to give it a shot. This is a totally different pink. Is this more my pink? Maybe it is actually. Now I'm looking at it thinking actually that probably is more my pink, isn't it? That's why I got it. This is another dress I haven't really worn a lot, but I think I'm going to try this summer. I don't want to get rid of it. This is going to this is going to go away because this is called this is an autumn autumn vibes. This is my Christmas dress. I wear it every Christmas. It's from Thought Clothing. Everyone always asks me where this is from and they don't sell it anymore. Sorry. Roxy, that was me. They don't sell it anymore and I don't think they sell anything similar, but I love it and I wear it every year. Again, these I kept in my wardrobe, but I did not wear them. So next year I will remember to put these away because I thought I might wear them with like jumpers and tights and I just didn't. Blues are definitely a colour that I love and I think is a colour that looks good on me because I have a lot of these blues in my wardrobe and I think that's for a reason because I think that it is the vibe. This is one of my favourite dresses, it's from Sea Salt. And you always ask me where it's from whenever I wear it. It's from Sea Salt. All of my clothing, I swear, is Sea Salt Finisterre. I love to support Cornish companies. Um, Naked Generation, another Cornish company. Faithful, the brand, or Linen Fox, generally speaking. <laughs> Right, so that's that wardrobe done. And I've got a lot of um, hangers for when those dresses are all washed. I know I've got a lot of dresses. Um, I'm done with the days of getting rid of stuff just for the sake of minimalism and to have a certain amount of clothes. Don't be influenced by other people online to make you feel like you need to change or go against your personal loves, interests, uh, urges, whatever, your personal style. You can own Lots of lovely dresses, colourful dresses. I own a lot for work reasons because I'm always filming videos and I want to look, you know, have nice dresses for videos. It really makes a difference. It makes the videos look nice and it creates a kind of a vibe. And for photos and stuff, you don't have to exist in a black and white world where it's like you either are a minimalist who owns nothing or you're a shopaholic who owns loads of dresses. Like you can use minimalism in the way that I do for decluttering purposes, to try and stop yourself from shopping too much, for, for organising your home, for being mindful with your choices, without having to fit into this tiny box that minimalism is, which I do think is kind of a privileged white male space a lot of the time. That's what we see a lot of online and I don't get on with it. I don't, I don't know, I just think it's a little bit, ugh, men going around the world in back with backpacks and two pairs of shorts and two white t-shirts great it's just not it's not the fit for everyone you don't have to fit into that box there are lots of people who <laughs> can use minimalism and i want to it's kind of like the discussion i had in vlogmas where we need to stop making an, an exclusionary club where it's like you're not good enough you don't fit into this when it comes to sustainability or minimalism or veganism we need to be an inclusionary club to say, you know, you actually can use minimalism in a way that works with your life. You can own all the pretty dresses. If they bring you joy and make you happy and it's great for your lifestyle and you love it, it's great for your job or whatever. Like you don't have to cut things out of your life just because someone on the internet said that you have to and that's what minimalism is. Make it work for you and actually use it in a way that helps you because the, the longer I've been doing that, the more positive of a relationship and a less stressed out mind I've had. And I do think that sometimes minimalism and sustainability and even veganism does feed, it's like what I was talking about earlier, it does feed into a little bit of perfectionism, um, OCD tendencies. And I'm not talking like OCD as in like, oh, I'm so OCD. I'm talking actual like mental uh, health OCD where I have health anxiety. It's a form of OCD and I do have... OCD tendencies and it's a really debilitating thing that people experience and people in my life experience um, and I do think that yeah they feed into these tendencies of perfectionism, black and white thinking, OCD tendencies, controlling tendencies um, and extreme ways and obsessive ways of thinking and 
it can attract people who are who have tendencies towards that with, with their mental health and I, I think that you need to be wary and understand am I doing this because it makes sense for me or am I doing this because I'm trying to control something or obsess over something or it's that tendency coming through in another area of my life and I noticed that about myself <laughs> there's a lot of commonalities so just something to think about anyway we don't need to get that deep I'm gonna go into this wardrobe now <laughs> This wardrobe will have some more things that I can put into the winter vacuum pack bag because it's got all of my woolly jumpers. I'm gonna keep some jumpers because I live in England. However, I don't need so many. But let's start with this top drawer. I got this recently and I shared it on my stories and I've never had so many uh, people click on a link before, ever. I wasn't sharing an affiliate link or anything, but I just linked it and People obviously really liked it. So I'll link it below. It's from Nobody's Child. It's um, the same place I got that green dress from that I mentioned. So I'll link that as well. Because Nobody's Child do quite affordable but um, sustainable clothing. I think they're trying to like use more sustainable conscious materials. And their stuff is in the more affordable bracket. Because I know lots of sustainable brands are beyond a lot of people's budgets. And I have bought uh, cardigans from them before. The grey one and the yellow one that I wear in loads of my videos are from Nobody's Child, so I made another order and got this. I got a few other outfits that I've returned because I bought them for the Hendy, but I get, got like a satin black skirt and that green dress and I love this, it's so cute. This and the pair of jeans, perfect spring outfit. I need to do a little bit of a rejig in this wardrobe because it's a bit stuffed. Um, like some, some drawers are like empty and some of them are really stuffed. These are gonna have to be another trial and I'm not sure that, look at that. That's probably not going to fit me, is it? These are the trouser version of those shorts. So I'm also going to try these on because I also think they are maybe too big and therefore unflattering. So we'll try those on. Here is my collection of striped sea salt tops. Lol. <laughs> I'm a minimalist. <laughs> oh my gosh. I literally wear all of them. I'm going to fold them better though. Again, I have all these shorts that I kept in the drawer. Uh, through the winter thinking I might wear them to exercise and I just never did so next year I will definitely put those away. How great are these? I got these uh, vintage shopping the other day. I got this and a corduroy shirt which I've worn loads and I'm in love with these. I ordered some white trousers on M&S and they arrived, did not like the fit of them, they were so uncomfortable. I don't know what it is about trousers they don't make them high-waisted enough anymore, or they don't make them high-waisted enough for me, but when I buy vintage trousers, I guess the style back then, or I think these these looked 90s to me, maybe 80s, they look 90s. Um, I feel like high-waisted was actually high-waisted. Nowadays, high-waisted is just not high-waisted. These go all the way up to my waist, which never happens, and they're a beautiful cream color, and I love them, even like this, like with a white top. I just love them. They're the comfiest thing ever. I was so happy with these and I think they were like 30 pounds. It was from the, is it called Wild Pony? Something like that in Falmouth. Such a great vintage shop if you live in Cornwall. So a lot of these dungarees, I think they're gonna go away for the, the winter. Just corduroy full length dungarees, just not, doesn't feel like, that to me is autumn winter. Denim like this I would wear in um, spring. So I'll keep that, that's a Finisterre. These are ones I actually did get from M&S. So I think M&S jeans I like, but I don't like their trousers for me. These are their mum jeans. I got them in a size 14 long. I always like to go like a size up in jeans so that they're comfy. So they're just like, they've got that like, you know, room to sit down um, because usually I'm a size 12 in my bottoms. They just have that extra space and then they create more of a comfy fit. These are another pair from M&S. These are their boyfriend. So I've got mum pair and a boyfriend pair. I'm not sure what the difference is. I actually know. I think that mum jeans are like high-waisted, whereas boyfriend more kind of sit like lower. They're not high, they're not low waist, but they're like more like on your hips. Um, and these, I think I only got them in regular length and they've got a massive rip. The rip just kept on getting bigger. Eek. And then my final pair of Lucy and Yak. They're pink ones, which I haven't worn in ages, probably because it's not, um, it's not been spring and I'm, li look at how cute. I literally want to wear this outfit right now. So cute and they're really like 
baggy and comfy. Do you know what dungarees makes me think as well? And that sounds ridiculous, but seeing those dungarees made me a little bit broody, as I imagine when um, I'm pregnant one day and I can wear dungarees and have a full pregnant belly. I just think that's so cute. And before people start commenting, no, I'm not pregnant. No. Never ask a woman if she's pregnant. Right, this is the drawer that's gonna be stuffed full. And next year when I do put everything back in there, I need to um, think about how I'm arranging this because this drawer is always the one that's stuffed because I have so many jumpers. And I wear all of them. <laughs> I'm a cozy, cold person. Cozy, cold, I'm, I like being cozy and I'm always cold. I'm always freezing cold. This was actually a jumper that I got in M&S in the sale because I was thinking about my color theory stuff. And I was like, is this the color that looks good on me? Sort of electric blue, is it? Tell me, I don't know, I thought it was. But I don't think, am I gonna wear this in the spring? Or the summer? No, I'm not. Or am I? Oh, I don't know. This one I definitely wear all year round. But is this one that's not my colour? This is maybe a good example of like the fact that this maybe is fine, but wearing it with these two washes me out. So like this would be fine if I was wearing it with navy or something. Now this is a colour that does look good. I think this is 100% a winter jumper because it's so chunky. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm basically getting rid of the, the chunky ones. These are all chunky. And I just, I don't imagine, even if it's cold, I feel like I'm in spring mindset now. Um, I'm unsure about these. These are my Organic Basics recycled wool ones. I think I'll just keep my, my gray one, my charcoal one, because that's so universal that like, if it's cold, it's useful, but these ones, they're just very wintry. This makes me sad. This is like one of my most worn, like I wear the, I have a whole separate drawer for this kind of jumper, like a cotton sweatshirt. And here it's got these marks on it at the front. Are they still there? Maybe they've gone, but it had these marks that were always there. So whenever I put it on, I felt grubby because it didn't look clean. I feel like maybe Alex has got it out, but this is my most worn jumper because it's like a lovely cropped fit. You see how it's like ruched at the bottom. I got this in a vintage or secondhand shop. I've no idea really. And this is the same, but it's a bit smelly. I feel like this needs to be, um, you know, like cleansed in the bath. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a whole lot of that today. This needs to be properly stain removed. It's a white jumper, but it's got stains all over it. Not really sure how. I don't wear this hoodie, the St. Andrews hoodie, because it is like a bit more, I just find it difficult to get on and off because it's like smaller. I guess it's like the right size for me and I prefer to wear baggy jumpers. Yeah, it's a size medium. So the, like the neck is kind of small and then it ruins your hair and it's like short, so it doesn't cover your bum when you're wearing leggings. So I think I'm just gonna put this like in storage and just keep it there. Why is my nose so itchy? Oh, through the dust. So I normally store my like sweatshirt and trouser sets together but it is difficult to store in my uh wardrobe with the way that the drawers are set up so i'm actually going to store them separately because i used to put them yeah with my trousers and it would always take up so much room because they're quite bulky if you store them together and i feel like it encouraged me to only ever wear them together so i think if i actually store them separately i might wear them more separately so just these trousers as some lounge trousers i think it would work better and i think it will fit in my drawers better these trousers are just so big they take up so much room when i try and put them in the drawers the last bit is shoes we're getting through this i don't think i'm going to declutter any shoes because these are all summer shoes and that was actually another thing i was just thinking that i didn't actually store away any of my summer shoes because I had it in my mind that flats like this I would wear in the winter, but I'm too much of a baby and I will only leave the house with boots on and socks. Like I can't, I can't tolerate it. <laughs> so I think that that will actually free up space in my wardrobe because some of my shoes in there, there's like one too many pairs. So I'm really looking forward to wearing all my Vivea flats. I've got them in all the different colors and they're all like foldable, washable. I've got, these pointed flats in the chocolate brown and then the tan, and then the stripey. And then I've got the loafer shape in blue, which is kind of a nice 
change if you're wearing a simple outfit. And then these kind of more pointed ones, these actually I did wear in the winter because um, you can slip these on with tights and they just look nice. But then most of these are all, winter, are all summer shoes. So Converse, I don't wear these in the winter because my feet get freezing because you can't wear thick socks in Converse. So I only wear these in the summer. Oh, actually, I say that. I definitely put my, where are they? I need to go hunt. No, I have, my summer shoes are somewhere. I've got all my like, my Birkenstocks and yeah, I do have them somewhere, but I think I left these because I thought I might wear some of these. So I've got these Vivea sandals, which I literally love so much. I wore these so much on my honeymoon because they're so comfortable, but they just feel a little bit smarter. And then I've got my Sam Smith white trainers. And then these Karayuma little, uh, what do you call them, plimsoll kind of shoes. And this is a really cool sustainable brand if you're looking for a new pair of kind of plimsolls. They're a bit dirty. I think these could potentially do with a wash, but I think I'll do that another day. But I need to go find my, I need to go find the bag. I think it must be under, under the bed, but I'm gonna go into this wardrobe first. So this was the wardrobe that I mentioned to you about the mold problem. And actually ever since I have sprayed it in here, it has been winter. We've had the whole of winter and it's fine. We used these, which I think Alex just got in the shop, um, interior dehumidifier and they've worked and we just kept the doors open more. I didn't put any, I think the mistake I made is I put a pair of shoes in here that were a bit muddy and that had moisture in it, um, these ones. So it's, it stayed actually fine in here and we're getting the house repointed this spring. So all the damp issues should go. Right, I think I've grown out of a few of these shoes. I already don't really love them. These, I just, they feel like my teenage self trying to remain and they're just not me. Um, I got them ages ago and I've worn them year in, year out and I really do love them. Oh, the thing is, I look at them and I think I love them and am I being led by trends? They are very cool and I feel like they're classic but then I don't end up wearing them a great deal. But then when I put them, I hold them up to the camera, I think they look like proper cool, like boots, you know, like almost slightly Victorian looking, but also not. It's like the laces. Ugh, I can never get rid of them. It's so weird. But it's almost like they're, they're like, in my mind, they're very close to the shoes that I want, but they're not quite right. It's almost like I wish the front was a bit more pointed rather than the, the amount that they're round. Same as these, like I literally love these, but again, I just wish the front wasn't so rounded. I feel like it'd be, but then maybe that's more classic. And I don't want to be led by trends because I know that now like the shoes that are a bit trendy are the ones that go a bit higher up the ankle, like the kind of shorter shoes. These aren't that low cut though. No, I've got to keep those two pairs. Doc Martens will never get rid of these, both of these pairs. To be honest with you, I think that that's in the future, the only shoes that I'm ever gonna buy in the future will have will just be classic ones. Like Doc Martens will, and Converse and platform, like um, Plimsoll trainers, they'll never go out of fashion, neither will doll shoes, like little flats, like Birkenstocks, just, they just will never go out of fashion. They go with everything. I wear these year in, year out, and they don't, they don't, look worse when they get battered they almost look better like these are kind of battered and i kind of prefer them that way than when they were new they were very shiny and cherry red these are both the vegan doc martens and i wear these in the winter and in the summer these look so cute with a dress in the summer you know a leather jacket whatever that's never ever gonna go out of fashion so i will literally never get rid of my doc martens mm. these i love these these are from vivere they're sock boots but i won't wear these in the spring summer because they're sock boots and they're very much the sort of shoes you wear with with tights to make the outfit look very like seamless. And this is what I mean, this is a bit more on trend now. This lower heel, this pointier toe, the higher ankle. It's making me have allergies. I think it's maybe the damp and the, the dust. These I'm unsure whether to keep out or put away. These I got recently, they're from Aloha. Aloha are a sustainable brand and they do do vegan boots. And I love them. But I'm wondering, will I wear them in the spring and summer? Potentially not, because they'll be a bit hot. But then maybe they would look quite nice under... Do you wear high boots in the spring, summer? Maybe they'd look quite nice with um, summer dresses. Or would they? I'm unsure. Can you just let me know if you wear? Because I literally have never owned knee-high boots before. Do you wear them in the spring and summer? These are another Vivea pair of Chelsea boots. Hello, Zussie. 
and I'm just wondering, I will wear boots sometimes in the spring, summer, but not four pairs. They're the sort of thing you wear constantly all the time in, this, in the winter, but you would wear them occasionally in the spring, summer. I think that these, I'm gonna put these away because they've got the velvet on them. They feel a bit more wintry. These are all pairs of heels. Um, I'm thinking of selling these or replacing them because I bought these for my sister's wedding and they're from Nat and Nat. And I bought them, wore them, loved them, but I think when they arrived, I just had to use them because it was too late to replace them. But the colour, I think this is a good example of this colour just washes me out. I just think it makes my feet look a not very nice colour. It makes them look a bit washed out, you know? And I feel like if I'm gonna get a pair of nude heels, they should be a different colour. Because these are quite purpley and they make my feet look quite pink. I really like the square at the front. That's very cool. I'm gonna, I need to wear these basically. I need to put them on with an outfit and I'll decide and I'll report back. Cause I do have a wedding, the wedding for the for the Hindu. Um, I'm bridesmaid for my friend Jazz. She was my bridesmaid and um, that's the Hindu I just went on and I need to have a pair of heels for that. So I need to try on, I think the bridesmaid's dress with those heels, see if it looks right. And if it doesn't, I will replace them. These shoes I got for my wedding slash honeymoon i love these these are from kurt geiger carvella no carvella isn't carvella it's like carvella by kurt, Ge kurt geiger anyway they were vegan leather and i couldn't find any other vegan leather white shoes in my size because i'm a size eight i've got very big feet i couldn't literally these were the only ones i could find that were this kind of block heel and i actually love them they're really comfortable and they're timeless and then these are my last pair. These are from Beyond Skin, which I think don't exist anymore. I think they went bust, which is so sad. Classic pair of, pair of little block heels. I will probably wear these in the summer or e in the evenings. I'm gonna keep these, whoop, I'm gonna keep these boots in here because I feel like at least in the spring I might wear these if I was kind of transitional outfits. And then these boots, am I gonna wear both of these boots? The thing is, they, ah, yes, I will. I literally will. I will wear both of these. I've got to find my summer shoes to finish this whole thing off. Uh oh. <gasps> I've just found a whole nother bag. Oh no. Where's this all gonna go? How did I not realise this was like loads of clothes were missing? Right. <laughs> right, let's start with the shoes now we're in the shoe zone. Oh gosh, I should not have stored those like this. <gasps> Oops. Right, this is a rookie error. So I got these for our honeymoon. These are, um, whatchamacallits, Castagna wedges, that's the name. But they're like, I got the satin ones because I thought it was very bridal and I've like squished them. Do not store your Castagna satin wedges in a vacuum pack box. These, if I want to store them away, I should put them in a box somewhere, safe and sound. In fact, this is what I'm going to order. Once I get off of here, I'm gonna order some shoe storage for my tool boots and for these. But these, I thought these would be timeless. They've got a little bit of glitter through the, the wedge. They're very high, but they're so great on holiday and they're so comfortable. I wore them quite a lot on our honeymoon. These can go in the back here. It's gonna make me rethink these boots and whether I should keep them. Okay, this was literally perfect timing <laughs> for the disaster that was thinking I was done and I very much was not done. I just got a delivery from Barry M and Crosstown. I'm assuming it's from Barry M because they've just released skincare, which I'm very excited to try because I know that I said I've been really on it with my skincare. So I will try that and see what I think of it. Crosstown donuts are my favorite donuts on the planet. Mmm, donut and a coffee. What is a better combo? Mmm, oh my god, look at the jam! Mm. Sorry, Roxy. She's staring at me very angrily that I'm eating the donut and she's not. These I've had for years from MS. Absolutely love these. I feel like if you don't have a pair of shoes like this in your wardrobe, get some. Some tan and white flats. Not flats, sorry, like slightly heeled sandals that are strappy. I feel like these are another timeless pair of shoes that I wear every single year because they look kind of like you've got heels on, but you don't. And they look lovely. And m and often do vegan leather in their shoe ranges. Um, 
they always have some kind of vegan leather shoes and handbags and i know lots of people don't like vegan leather lots of people say it's not sustainable that's a whole other debate but leather to treat leather you think of what skin is i know this is like horrible but realistically if you think it's horrible it may be a question mark about whether you sh whether you'd want to wear leather or not if you find the idea that it's skin gross then anyway <laughs> if you think of like an animal skin and then leather the end product how different they are um leather has to be treated with a lot of chemicals in order for it to become leather and there's a lot of runoff involved in that and it does damage the environment quite significantly it's not a waste product from the meat industry it's not you know there's lots lots of things involved to make leather commercially i'm sure that there are lots of companies out there who make leather in a sustainable and slightly different way but leather has a strong smell for a reason um, because they've been treated very very heavily so i'd much rather go for vegan leather because there's no cruelty involved and um, lots of vegan leather nowadays is pursuing more sustainable alternatives uh, i know that obviously pu leather is not doing that but there's lots of uh, vegan leathers that are made from recycled plastics made from mushrooms made from pineapples made from cotton even i think like canvas there's like literally so many different types of vegan leather that's very innovative and i'd always rather go for that personally that's my personal opinion on it um and i'd always rather choose that or second hand leather every time and then we've got my Vivea kind of like Chanel dupes these espadrilles I absolutely love them but they're gonna go over there because they're like I'm gonna put my casual ones over there these are my Birkenstocks which are probably my most worn shoe of my entire wardrobe um and I have the slip-on like I call them my clogs they're not clogs I don't know what they're called but they have basically Birkenstock sells the vegan versions of all their classic ones so I've got these in black and then I've got the Birkenstocks in like a kind of greeny colour I actually kind of need to get new ones because they've got paint all over them and I wear them around the house and in the garden so much that they have become disgusting and I actually like them with outfits so I need to get a pair that look good with outfits I mean it's nothing new Birkenstocks everyone has them <laughs> and then these are the sort of shoes that I would wear sort of adventuring or hiking or going out for the day these are my zero shoes and they were the only sandals I took with me traveling in Thailand and Southeast Asia and they're really really great practical shoes so these are gonna go in this one. Excuse all the mess. <laughs> Maybe the trousers are actually better than the shorts. They are still like rather big, but then maybe that's the purpose because this part is okay. Because this does look nice, like untucked like this. They're very comfortable. Yeah, these I'm definitely keeping, but the shorts, I feel like maybe they're a bit boxy. Sorry, I'm cut out. I do find it difficult in this space um, to fit you in. I think when I redo this room, that's something that I need to consider when I'm designing it, is like giving you enough space so that I can stand and you can see me full body, but it's not, we don't have like big bedrooms. That was me, Roxy. Roxy, that was me. Um, but yeah, I think I like these a lot they're comfortable and I think maybe the shorts I feel a bit mumsy in them I don't feel which is there's nothing wrong with that I'm not being I feel like I say that and that's not a good word is it I should use a different word there's nothing wrong with being a mum so why is that a word that we were given when we were younger <laughs> I just feel frumpy that's maybe the better word in those shorts so I think they'll go but I think I'll keep these this is the next dress I feel like because it is a little small it's not the most flattering because I don't have much of a waist. My The difference between like my under boob, <laughs> like you know your bra size and my waist size are like two inches different, which I think for most people is quite different. I don't really go in and out. I just kind of go straight up and down. So I'm not sure if that's the most flattering, having this like big band here and then my boobs, it's not like I've got small boobs, so it kind of is a bit, and then like the length of this, it feels a bit fitted, but it's such a pretty dress that this is why I haven't gotten rid of it. I don't think it's particularly flattering on my arms, you know? This is another thing where I think with colour theory too, is this kind of white a bit washing out? I don't know. What do you think? Can you please vote on this dress? Do I keep it? I think for me personally, I would suit a dress if I want to get this style with this sort of broderie anglais, that beautiful material. Look at my spring nails for this video, look. Perfect timing. I think I'd be better off getting a dress that has more volume 
at the bottom, more volume on the sleeves, that suits me better than this sort of shape. Maybe I'm overanalyzing, so let me know. What do you think? What do you think of this dress? And I will keep it, I'll wash it, and I'll either keep it or get rid of it. I'll give it to my sister, because I know she will like this, when you see this video. <laughs> this is way too small. Like, this is actually horrible. I need to take this off now. This makes me feel horrendous. That's actually a really good example of keeping clothing that doesn't fit you and probably won't fit you again, that can just be triggering and it's just not a good idea to keep because that fit me when I was 25, 26, when I lived in Brighton and I was like a small size 10. I don't weigh myself so I have no idea the difference and I'm sorry if talking about this sort of stuff triggers you. I only talk about it because I think it's what goes through a lot of women's minds and I think within the body positivity world, it's a lot of like, just be positive, just be happy. And the reality is we're all trying to do that and we're trying to accept our bodies, but it's extremely difficult when you've been brainwashed and indoctrinated your whole life to look a certain way. So trying that on was very triggering and I hated doing that because the arms wouldn't even like go further than this. So that's gonna go to my sister. I think that's something that's quite nice actually. If you have a relative or a friend who is a different size to you, who fits the size that maybe you were, if you were bigger or smaller, whatever, whatever's changed, give it to them because it feels like you're not letting go of it completely. And it kind of, it brings me a bit of joy that even though I can't wear it anymore because it doesn't fit me, someone else can get enjoyment from it. Like that really makes me happy. So I know that she'll be really excited about some of these clothes because they're lovely clothes. And yeah, that kind of like makes it not so bad. <laughs> so... She'll be hopefully excited, especially because spring summer's coming up and hopefully they'll fit her. And if they don't, I can sell them or donate them. But I've got a big bag now so I can put everything away in here. And there's only two things that I'm, well actually no, I'll ask her. This, this I'm gonna have to get rid of. It's just the wrong size. I got sent the wrong size. Um, but these things are all gonna go to my sister, including those two dresses that I just threw out there because they need to go in the wash first. And then these pair of trousers, they wouldn't even go up over my bum, which I'm gonna see that as a good sign that I've been getting those gains in the gym because I have, because my bum has grown <laughs> from the, all the squatting and deadlifting. So yeah, this is my pile of things I'm getting rid of alongside those two dresses. So I'll put those out here. And I did remember, I'm not done. <laughs> I forgot to do the hanging uh, tops. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Keeping all of those, they're all pretty much spring summer stuff that I should have put away because they're like shirts. Don't tend to wear those as much because I tend to just wear jumpers. So that is that. All done. There is a bag in here of stuff that needs to be mended, but I need to take some stuff to the dry cleaners. I want to take my wedding shoes to the cobblers. So I think that that's going to be something that I need to set as like a, a thing that I can do this month. <coughs> that I finally take my wedding dress to the dry cleaners. I take the shoes and then I take those things to be mended and uh, I've got my that bridesmaids dress disaster that you all remember potentially instead of getting rid of the dress I kept it I bought a new one for my bridesmaid to wear but I kept the dress because I'm going to shorten it and I can wear it like in the evenings and hopefully all the snagging and all the marks won't be seen that visibly but I do need to get around to doing that so let's put all this stuff away Thank you so much for watching what was probably an insanely long video. <laughs> I'm gonna go downstairs and sort my coats out and, well I might have lunch first, but I need to sort my coats out and put the scarves in these bags, vacuum them up, put them underneath the bed and do it all again next year. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did and subscribe because if you wanna see more decluttering videos like this, I make them all the time. <laughs> I've recently decluttered a lot so you can go back and watch basically me decluttering the entire house and I didn't do the wardrobe specifically for the reason of I wanted to leave that for the spring summer season. I'm gonna be doing some spring cleaning soon so stay tuned for that and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.